Open your Bibles up to uh, Titus chapter 2. I want to continue with you uh, in our studies of the book of Titus and want to begin lesson 8 with you at this time. I want you to open your Bibles up specifically to verses 9 through 10. Verses 9 through 10 of uh, chapter 2, which is the instruction that Paul is giving to slaves. Thus far, we have uh, really walked through the prior uh, seven lessons, uh, so we are more than halfway through the book. And uh, we've been looking at uh, the six groups that Paul is giving instruction to um, for Titus to teach throughout the islands of Crete and the churches that are present there. And of course, uh, those groups are elders, older men, older women, younger men, younger women, and slaves. We looked at in chapter 1, verses 10 through 16, uh, the elders' task of uh, dealing with the rebellious people, which are those who will not be in any group. They won't come under accountability. They won't come under authority. And uh, powerful truth uh, we discovered there. Entering into chapter 2, uh, Paul is continuing where he left off uh, with the teaching of the sound doctrine. And we walk through the older men, older women, younger, uh, younger women, uh, younger men, and now entering into the verses 9 through uh, 10 uh, section on slaves. The idea of a slave, before we read the passage, uh, the idea of a slave is a little bit different than we would probably understand in our day. Um, slavery uh, in our day, of course, doesn't exist in the United States, but it, it has in our past, and it was a uh, uh, very much... Uh, a brutal type of uh, treatment to another human being, um, you know, at times. And uh, they were owned as property. This is certainly uh, the case uh, in, their, in their day and age. But there was also, see, there was varying degrees of slaves. Uh, you were not only, uh, you could be as property born into slavery, those kinds of things. You could be taken into slavery because of debts you could not pay. You could even sell yourself as a slave for a certain period of time. So slavery had a very broad, uh, broad understanding. And we're going to look a little bit more about that. But I want to read through this passage with you at this time, verses 9 and 10 of chapter 2 uh, of the book of Titus. Uh, this is how it reads. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back to them, and not to steal from them, but to show them they can be fully trusted, so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. really find it interesting that, uh, of course, when Paul is talking about slaves here, the context of the passage in, in which we're dealing with really has to do with slaves in the proper sense of people who are really as property of another person, uh, who are in service to another person. That's the idea of a slave. That's certainly in mind here. We don't want to take away from that. But I really find it interesting as we begin to, as I begin to work through this passage, that Paul himself uh, refers uh, to his life uh, as a slavery type of a lifestyle. Uh, if you go back even to chapter 1 of, of this book, he says, Paul, a servant. And the idea of servant here is the exact same word that we have in verse 9 as slave. So Paul looks at himself as a slave. Uh, and the idea of a slave uh, is, is, again, it can be a, um, it can be a uh, owner or property. Uh, it can also mean bond servant. But a slave is one. Now get this. This is interesting. Especially in terms of how Paul, and he makes this very clear. I want to look at a couple different passages with you. But uh, he makes it very clear that this is how he views a slave. A slave is one who is in permanent relation of servitude to another. So it's the person who absolutely is in a place of servitude towards another. Okay? Serving that one. Which is why he also refers, or we can translate this as a servant. But it's the idea of a slave. Also, uh, the, the slave's will is being altogether consumed in the will of the other. Okay? Uh, they are bound to serve, not only in their actions, but their entire will is lost into the, uh, into the will of another. They are a slave. They have no will of their own. They have the will of their master. They carry out their master's desire. This is the idea of how Paul introduces himself. I wanted you um, to see this very clearly. So I'd like you to turn with me, and I didn't have you mark this, but um, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. If 
you have your Bibles uh, readily available, and I'm trusting you do, I want you to look back at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and I want to look specifically with you, verses 20 down through verse 24. And again, we're looking at the idea of a slave. Okay? Okay. The idea of a slave. While you're turning there, again, a slave is one who is in permanent relation of servitude. Okay? Permanent Permanent servitude, and in, along with that, we'll put here on the end, uh, his will is altogether consumed in the will of another. So it has to do with the will. Just powerful. Okay. Listen how Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 20 down through verse 23. Each one should remain in the situation in which uh, he was when God called him. Okay? Pretty plain. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you. Although, if you can gain your freedom, do so. Here's what he says. Really interesting. He says, everyone, given instruction to the, to the Corinthian church, remain in the situation in which God called you. Okay? Hey, there's purpose there. And actually, there's more than that ha that has to do with what he's talking about. But he immediately refers to slaves. And he says, now listen, hey, remain in the position in which you're in. Now, if you can gain your freedom, okay? If you can gain your freedom, do so. Nothing wrong with gaining your freedom, but I find it really interesting. Listen to what he says. For he who was a slave when he was called by the Lord is the Lord's freedman. In other words, even though you're a slave, you are free in Christ. Okay? There's an attitude of that you are, um, you are free in Christ as a slave. And why that's true is, is this. Okay? Verse 23. Uh, no, I'm sorry, verse 22. For he who was a slave when he was called by the Lord is the Lord's freedman. Similarly, he who is a free man when he was called is Christ's slave. So this is what he says. He says, hey, if you're a slave, um, hey, just remain being a slave. Uh, you know, I guess if you can get your freedom, do so. But the idea is, is that you're going to be a slave anyway. Okay? Because when you're a slave, when you uh, become a Christian, you become free unto Christ. But being free unto Christ means you are a slave to Christ. So you're going to be a slave anyway. So the nature, and this is really powerful, see the nature of the Christian is slavery to God. It is servanthood to God. It is, I lose my own will, I lose my own uh, uh, ability to make decisions, I lose my own uh, my rights. Hey, I, I absolutely consume the will of the one who died and gave his life for me and loves me. Okay? The idea of a slavery is powerful. He talks about it in chapter 7, and if you just flip over two chapters, which really, uh, in my passage, is, is almost on the same page. Verse 19, it's one page. Um, listen to how Paul refers to himself. Though I am, this is uh, chapter 9, verse uh, 19 of 1 Corinthians. He says, though I am free and belong to men, I make myself a slave. Same word. I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jew, I become a Jew. To win the Jews. To those who are under the law, I become like one under the law. Although myself, I am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I become like one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I become the weak. To, the, to win the weak, I have become all things to men so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. So in other words, Paul says, listen, hey, I'm free, but I have made myself a servant, a slave to all men. Okay? Um, this is really important. Go back to our passage in, in Titus. It's really important we understand the idea. Uh, there's so many misunderstandings of Christianity and uh, when you come back to the, the scriptures, see what you're going to find over and over consistently is you are a slave to him who has called you. I really got interested in, and just really quickly on this, I really got interested in a passage I've been studying in, in uh, the book of John, chapter 5, verses 41 through 44, and the emphasis that, um, that Jesus puts on um, our relationship to God has to do with slavery. It's the slavery emphasis. Um, we are either going to be a slavery to the enemy, a slave to the enemy, or we're going to be a slave to God. And we were made for the for um, we were made for being servants or slaves. Now it sounds really odd and really twisted. 
But see, the idea is I was made to either carry out his desires or made to carry out the enemy's desires. It's powerful. Okay? So the idea of a slavery literally is a one in permanent servitude and of the will. And I would add to this just as a note, uh, which I think is very fitting in, in his book, is this can do with the slave proper, one who is in a, a who is a bond servant. Bond. Or we can look at this as a Christian. It's powerful. Now, he gives a number of characteristics uh, of a slave. And um, he begins by saying, in verse 9, teach slaves to be subject to their masters. The idea of subject, the idea of subject is the same word, exact same word that we have for uh, the uh, younger women being subject to their husbands. Uh, the, the word subject is a compound word. If you remember, we use CW for compound word. It's a compound word, has two words. It means under or beneath. I think that's right. Yeah, it is. Under or beneath. And the other word is to place in order. And as we go through these, certainly, really, probably, we're focusing really primary on, uh, primarily on the proper idea of, of what it means to be a slave. But I want you to carry with this as well, and we're going to look at this in your small group questions and such, but I would like for you to keep, keep an eye, uh, really, and, and look at some of this in the idea of the Christian. I think it's really valuable that we have the details of a slave because it carries right over into our Christian understanding of being a slave. Nonetheless, slave is to be subject, compound word, meaning underneath, uh, under or beneath, and to place an order, which again is the idea of, 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 the idea of subject. It's, it's to uh, under and place an order. So, hey, the place of a slave is to be underneath the will of the master. That's what he's saying. He goes on and he says, teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything. Okay, in everything. See, there's no, there's no aspect, and again, really interesting for the Christian life, there's no aspect of the slave that is separate from the will of the master. See, there's nothing that belongs to the slave that does not belong to the master. It's powerful. Uh, in everything. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything. Try to, uh, try to please them. And that's really, that one phrase is a, is a compound word. Okay, Try to please them. Okay, that phrase is, a, is from a compound word, meaning well, first word, second word is please. So uh, the idea of trying to please them is, is there's a well and please, which is well pleasing, which really is, is plain. Hey, they're to live a life coming underneath the will and the authority of, them, of their master, having nothing uh, of themselves that's separate from that, that they might be able to please them in their lifestyle. Uh, he continues, teach slaves to be subject to their masters and everything, to try to please them, and not, and there's a couple of these nots. Okay, not, the first one is, to talk back to them, not to talk back to them, and to talk back, okay, that's the first one. The word to talk back is a compound word, meaning against We'll do it this way this time. And speak. Which is the idea of to speak against. It's to, uh, um, it's to defy. It's to come against. It's to put myself again out of the slave-master relationship. It's not to become a slave in the proper sense again. It's to talk back to. And also, they're not to steal from. And to steal from is pretty easy. Okay? To steal from means literally to take something that does not belong to you. That's easy. Okay? To take in an improper way. It's 
to steal. Okay? Not to steal from. He goes on. This is what he said so far. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters and everything to try to please them, not to talk back to them and not to steal from them, but, and again the contrasting statement is, but to show them or to show that they can be fully trusted. The idea of show, okay, the idea of show is a compound word. Meaning in and show. Okay? Which carries with it again the idea of, and this is kind of a I thought this is kind of a neat word. And when it says in and show, and again, they could have just used the one word, which means show, because that's part of the compound word. But what he does is is he attaches this word in to it. So the idea of the slave is to show, but it's not just to show outwardly, it's to show in. So the, the slave is to live a lifestyle in such a way that he is to show inwardly who he is. And, and in, uh, uh, in particular, it's um, so that, where, where is it at here? Okay, here it is. Uh, but to show that they can be fully trusted. And the idea of showing them to be fully trusted is not necessarily by their actions. It's because of the nature of what's going on inside of them. See, Christian, and again, man, this is powerful in the Christian context because Christians are not known by what they do outwardly. It's an inward showing of what's going on. So this is an inside deal. Okay? This is an inside deal. And the last one I won't write up just because we've plain ran out of room. The last one we really want to look at, the last particular word that I wanted to, to highlight, so that in every way they may make the teaching, which is again the doctrinal idea about God, our Savior, attractive. And the idea of attractive is, uh, carries with the idea of, um, of set in order, but metaphorically it means to honor or to dignify or to respect. And they, they respect it. They, they see it and they say, well, it, it puts it in a higher standing. Okay? It's, it, 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 it is... Uh, it literally, because of the inside of the slave and the lifestyle of the slave, it makes the gospel attractive. It makes the gospel, um, it makes the gospel worthy of respect. Okay, uh, that's that's kind of the idea. Looking at the idea of a slave again, what I would like for you to focus on and really want to press you on this is not just to look at this in terms of a slave here. Okay, and the bond servant. But take it as the Christian concept uh, that Paul refers to himself. We do a lot of teens, teamwork and camps. I uh, teach on the, uh, I teach out of Book of Titus oftentimes in the mornings. And we oftentimes will, um, of course there's six groups that, that Paul is giving instruction to. The slaves were the last group. And oftentimes we will ask the teens what group they fit in. And we'll have teens that say, man, I'm a slave, man. I'm a slave. <laughs> I'm thinking you're not a slave. But again, maybe they are a slave in this sense, in the Christian sense. I would ask you to carry with you this passage throughout the day. Ask the Lord to help you. Open your eyes to it. And uh, pray, Jesus, make me your slave. Make me your bondservant.